Hey guys, this is Kim from My Feather Nest and welcome back to my channel. So I have got an exciting DIY for you guys today. You guys know that I love honey pots and bee related items and my DIY bee skip that I did a couple years ago was a pretty big hit. Um, I know that a lot of people kind of decided to start making bee scaps. They were inspired by my video and I appreciate all the love and the support from you guys. I just love it. Um, and so I thought since it's been a while that I would do kind of like an updated version of another bee scap. <laughs> um, and so it's like one cannot have enough bee scaps in their lives. <laughs> and so I have had the plans for the one that I'm going to show you guys today for quite some time now. But it took me a while to finally find the rope that I was looking for. And so if you enjoy DIY crafts, and this is not a hard one, but yet it makes a huge impact. And if you enjoy bee related items, I know that Miss Joanna Gaines, um, she I guess has decorated her Magnolia store with a lot of bee scaps and I think of course all of the um, groupies for Joanna Gaines now have been turned on to bee scaps as well. And so anyway, um, it's just they're just kind of like a really kind of a popular item right now. And so I'm hoping that this will inspire you guys to make your own and to get creative. I really made mine this time a lot different than the other ones. And so stick around, make sure that you guys stay tuned so that you can make this DIY easy bee skep with me. And also, I am going to be telling you a huge announcement at the end of the video. So you have to stay tuned. <laughs> so either you have to skip through it or you gotta watch the whole thing. So anyway, let me know in the comment section if you decide to make your own bee scab and if you love those types of items, those natural type of items, give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. And I will also link my original DIY bee scab in an iCard probably right here and I'll try to link it in the description box below. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. And um, anyway, so let's get to it, come on. Oh, see this? this crazy amount of rope. <laughs> this is what I'm going to be using this time. This rope is probably at least, um, I don't know, I'm going to say maybe an inch and a half thick, I'm guessing. I've been looking for huge rope forever for this because I have had this in my mind for such a long time and had the most difficult time finding it. I mean, I had even been, been to like marine stores looking at like nautical rope and just could not find anything. So here, several weeks ago, I happened to go into the Home Depot and where they sell ropes and, and different things by the foot, that's where I happened to find this. Um, it's just the same thing as like I used before, it's just a lot thicker, it's just kind of like a sizzle type of rope. Um, it was a little bit more expensive, I believe it was maybe 56 cents a foot. Yeah, I believe that's what it was. It ended up, it ended up costing me about $28 for 50 feet and I'm hoping that that's all I'll need. I have not made this before obviously, I'm doing it with you guys and so you obviously know when you watch this video if you need more than that. <laughs> but um, so far, that's where I'm going. Now I was kind of putting it together just a little bit to see how I wanted to do it this time. I did get a big five gallon bucket and I thought well maybe that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and just wrap it around the bucket and then when it gets to the top of the bucket that's when I'll start tapering it because I thought, well, that way it'll kind of just, it'll be a little bit easier. But as I was just kind of playing with it and spinning it around the bucket, I did not like it because it was just going to be just this bucket shaped, you know what I mean? And I like to start tapering them almost immediately. Um, and you can either do a cone shape, which I have done before, or you can do a more rounded shape and you can manipulate the rope however you want to do it. So be creative with it. If you want, I will make sure that I link the original DIY bee skep right here in an iCard so you can go back and check that out. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty easy. I think this one may be a little bit more difficult just because it's a lot bigger of a rope. So obviously you're going to need a glue stick and you are going to need a lot of glue, a lot. And so I've got some other ideas about different things that you can do to decorate your bee skep, if you will, um, and I will make sure that I show them to you guys at the end. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, and you could always use a bucket if you want to get 
um, an idea of what type of shape circle that you should start out with. But y'all know me, if you don't, <laughs> you will now. I just kind of, I'm gonna eyeball it. Um, like I said, it's pretty, it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory what we're doing here. Obviously, we are going to glue the rope and we're going to glue it around, making sure that we get plenty of glue on it. And as we're going, after probably at least every, maybe every other row, we'll probably start trying to taper it in just a little bit. So my glue gun, I think it's pretty hot now. Mine is set on the hot or the, um, the high temperature. And all this fraying, um, I'm not gonna worry about it. Maybe at the end, I'll take some glue and kind of um, push it together if I feel like it's gonna create a problem. But this is not supposed to be perfect. And honestly, if it's perfect, it's not really gonna look as good, I don't think. So let's start going. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kinda work a little glue into the rope. And I don't wanna go too far because I don't want the glue to get cool on me. Make sure I've got a good start. I really hope this is gonna be enough glue. I mean, I'm sorry, enough rope. We shall see. I know I'm gonna go through all kinds of glue too. You know, the last video that I made, I had several people asking me how they think that this would do outside in the weather. And honestly, I have never used one outside before, um, just because, I mean, I just use them inside as decoration in different, all kinds of different places. Um, I will tell you that I plan on putting some of my B-Skeps out on a screen porch probably and they, they're, like I said, they're still gonna be covered. I don't know how these will do. Um, I'm thinking that they probably would do okay for a, an amount of, you know, a, a, you know, maybe a season, I'm not really sure, but I would think that over time, obviously, they would probably kind of slightly fall apart. Um, I don't know if I would recommend putting them outside, but then again, especially if you do the smaller one, especially if you get the um, the rope from like the Dollar Tree, it's, it's not a very expensive craft. And so go ahead and try it. I mean, it's not like you're going to be spending a lot of money if it does get ruined and you can always make another one. I think it would look cute outside though, like in a garden, like maybe, although <laughs> you can make sure, make sure if you're going to do that, like hang it somewhere. I don't know if that I would put a bottom on it. I have never put a bottom on any of mine. So see, seems like it's working really well, even though I was a little concerned thinking that maybe this rope was gonna be an issue sticking together with the glue, with the hot glue gun, because it's such a thick rope. But what I'm seeing so far, everything is looking pretty good. And so I'm actually gonna finish this third row up, and then I'm gonna get back to my starting spot. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and just taper it in just a little bit, ever so slightly. I don't think my glue gun is going to be able to keep up with my speed. <laughs> Maybe you should have two glue guns. Have one waiting in the wings. <laughs> and if you see spots that you're like, hey, I didn't put enough glue on there, just go back when you're finished and you can always adjust then. starting spot. Let me just try and lift this up here to show you a little closer. As you can see, things seem to be sticking together pretty good. I've got a nice size. I'd say it's about the size of like a, one of those bigger like five gallon buckets. 
um, as far as the diameter of the beginning circle goes. I'm gonna go ahead and probably start tapering in just a little bit, not too much. I'll probably do a couple rows. Um, and what I mean when I say taper in is instead of putting the glue on the very top of the rope, I'll probably put it to the inner, to the inside of the rope, just slightly though. You don't want to, you want it to be a very gradual change as you build up. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this one cone shaped yet or more of a dome shape, we'll see. And I guess it'll depend too on how much rope I have. Um, I'll show you this one row and then I'm probably gonna pause the video so I can get more of this done because it's pretty, pretty much the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Till you get to the very end when you can start using some creativity on how you can decorate it. And I've got some ideas. Like I said, you don't want it to be um, a, a, a dramatic change in your taper. You want it to be very gradual. end of this video I am going to give you guys a huge announcement I'm gonna make you wait though <laughs> I'm either you're either gonna be skipping ahead <laughs> or you're gonna watch this whole entire video to wait to hear what my huge announcement is so I can't wait to show you to tell you guys you I think you guys will be as excited as I am about it <laughs> anyway so like I said I'm gonna pause the video um, and I will get back to you when I've gotten more more done but like I said all I'm gonna be doing is just I'll probably do a couple rows like this and then I'll probably I'll taper just a little bit in and I'm gonna be watching the amount of rope that I have too because I'm like I said I'm really hoping that I don't have to buy any more rope so we'll see okay guys so I actually change of outfit different day because I did have to go back to Home Depot and purchase some more rope um, I will show you where I got to with the um, 50 feet of rope. This is where I'm at. And so you can see this is gonna be a very large B skip. <laughs> and I am loving it so far. And it's not perfect. You can see in there how, like I said, it's not perfect. This is not factory made, people. <laughs> this is imperfect. And it's supposed to be because, like I said, if it were perfect, then it would look store-bought. And that's not what this is. This is a craft that you can be proud of because you're doing it on your own. But anyway, I'm really loving the way that it is turning out. You can see that my I've tapered it in. Um, and so I purchased another 15 feet of rope. I thought maybe I would only need about 10 feet, but I want it to be um, on the safe side. So I got another 15 feet. And um, it was, I believe, it, like I said, it was like 56 cents per foot. So I spent another, what, seven something or another odd dollars on it. So all together, so far with the rope, I'm at about, probably about $35. The glue, I mean, you're gonna have glue. And so, um, and then, so apart from that, as far as if you just wanna leave it simple and plain, it's not that costly. It's, I mean, obviously it's more expensive, like I said before, than the one that I had used Dollar Tree items from but um let's go ahead and let's finish gluing this thing up so i think what i'm going to do um if you end up not having obviously if you can get just one piece cut you would be far better off um so that way you don't have to actually kind of like fuse if you will the ends together so my suggestion to you get more than you think you're going to need um you can see obviously how big mine is so far and I'll tell you at the very end how, how you know, you'll see how big it gets. So judge from where I was and that way you'll know how much rope that you should get. And like I said, if you can do it all in one piece, you're way better off. So I'm going to just hot glue these ends together as best as possible and um, then I will continue to glue on up until I feel like I'm where I need to be. Um, this one, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go completely cone shaped or if I'm gonna be more of a dome. We'll see as I continue.
Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting ready to kind of finish it off. I have a very small hole. I only have a short amount of my rope left, and so I probably will go around, let's see, once more, twice more, probably about two to three more times, and I'm gonna give myself enough leftover rope to where I can kind of tuck it down in, if you will, to make the little loop. Um, the last time that I made this, I actually cut the rope and left a little hole and just um, made a loop and just kind of glued it down in. This time I'm attempting to just, instead of having to cut it, just because it's such a huge piece of rope to cut it will be a pain. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do, um, if you can see that. So let's get on with that. Make sure that towards the top here, um, you're making such small circles. Make sure you use a lot of glue and you're kind of shoving it down, holding it in place for a little bit to let that glue set. I think I'm gonna do it just like that. So I'm going to leave about seven or eight inches left over, and this is what I'm going to use. I put a lot of glue right here. I'm going to kind of bump it up like so, if you can see that, hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to just shove it down in, and um, where it meets the other side is where I will put glue in. So I just kind of tucked the end down in, and now I'm gonna just put some glue right inside here. So I'm putting a lot, lots and lots and lots of glue right here where my end loop is meeting, just because naturally this rope does obviously not wanna do this. So you may have to use a lot of glue right in here to reinforce it. But as you can see, I got my little loop done. So now we're gonna move on to the next step. So I have got V-step done for the most part. Now I'm just gonna make the little opening or the fake opening. So I just took this skinnier rope. This is what I've used on previous b skeps that I've made. This rope can be purchased at craft stores and a lot of times you can find it at Dollar Tree. So I probably cut, oh I don't know, it's probably about eight inches long and I'm just going to fuse it together with my glue gun. And then I'm going to find out where I want it. Usually it's towards the bottom, but this is taste preference. You also, depending on how big your B-skep is, is how big you're gonna to want to make the fake opening. So because this is a bigger B-skep, I'm obviously doing a bigger opening, but you know the openings to B-skeps are not very big. Um, so you don't want it to be like huge. So I'm gonna glue this together now, and then I'm going to just glue it to my side, whatever side that you choose to be the front of your B-skep. I like my loop to face me, so how that landed is how I chose where the face of my B-step is going to be. So, just put some glue on the end, and fuse it, if you will, together, just like so. And you're probably gonna have to play with it a little bit to make sure that the glue kind of stays in place for you. Once it gets cooler, now I'm not recommending to do this, I'm just telling you what I do. Once the glue gets a bit cooler, I will kind of take it and manipulate it that way. Once that burn factor risk is gone. <laughs> but I still manage to burn myself almost every single time that I use a glue gun. Okay, so see, now I've got a little circle. 
So now I'm just going to glue this on. I'm probably coming up about four inches from the bottom and then we will paint the inside. To paint it, I actually just cut a little sponge and just on hand, I happen to have some of this Waverly um, chalk paint, but you can use craft paint, um, whatever you have around. Um, you know, you can use those little bottles of like that acrylic paint. I just, like I said, happen to have this. So I'm gonna glue this on and paint this and I'll be back to you guys. Okay, so I glued my other rope circle on, as you can see, and then I painted the inside to make it look like it's a hole. Obviously it's not because that would be really crazy hard. And I ended up actually having to use my fingers um, because my sponge was not doing so well. So, hey, I mean, I got dirty, right? But I was when I was able to use my fingers, I was really able to get it inside of that hole to cover up the whole thing really well. So now comes the fun part. You can leave the B-Skep just like this if you want, just plain. Maybe you like it plain. I have some plain ones. But if you know me at all, you know I am not a big, huge fan of anything plain. I like to go over the top. So one of my ideas, and I've actually already done this on another bee skep, is to use these little bees. Purchased these at Hobby Lobby. They came in a pack of six, and they were $3.99. And of course, you can always use your coupon, or if they happen to be on sale. Um, I've already used a couple out of the pack, so I have four left. I may go back and get a couple more, it just depends. But let me show you how I'm going to do this. So these are great because they already come, if you can see that, I don't know if it'll show on film because it's so, if you can see that it already comes attached to a little like green floral wire. So I'm going to attempt to place them around the B-Skep to where they look like they are kind of flying. Um, I'll probably glue one by the entrance actually on the b skip, but then a couple of them I'm going to just, like I said, put them in different, different areas, but I'm going to just poke the wire down through and make it look like it's flying. So let me show you. Another thing I did was I left the bottom of the wire, if you can see that, probably can't, and left the bottom of the wire a little bit more straight, but I did use my finger to make the top that you're going to be able to see outside of the b skip curly, I just wrapped it around my finger and then pulled it off. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I'll just find an opening wherever I feel like I want it and just poke it through. Of course, it's really easy and you may have to put a little glue on it and play with it a little bit, but there you go. You kind of get the, the idea and if you can see, it's gonna move around because I don't have it glued down. But if you can see that, it's not fastened flatly onto the b skep. So I think I'll probably end up getting another pack of these just so I kind of have some more going on. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Um, and then apart from that, I may attempt to do some other things to kind of um, make it a little bit, little bit more creative. We'll see, but I will come back to you when I'm all said and done and I will show you the finished piece and what it looks like and everything that I have done to it. And I will show you my big surprise that I have for you guys. Okay guys, so this is where I placed my B-Skep. And as you can see, I put a lot more on mine. I love going big. <laughs> and I've got so many of these B-Skeps now that I wanted to make this one just totally different. So not only is it huge, I decided to kind of basically wrap it, if you will, in this really pretty um, yellow garland. I just purchased that. I think it was, I've had it actually for a while. It was from Hobby Lobby, I believed. And I kind of just started on that side and kind of wrapped it around and kind of let it sit on the bottom. And I just used some of that floral wire to kind of hold it into place. Um, and so I absolutely love the way that it turned out. I love the little bees and they're just kind of, um, just a little accent and the more you look, the more you'll see. So I have it in here in my office area. And as you can see, there's that tractor supply picture that I purchased not too long ago. I showed you guys in a haul and I did take a little, it's actually a yellow. It kind of just looks like a white, but it was a very pale yellow and I dry brushed the bee itself 
and use a paper towel to just kind of wipe it off just so that bee would stand out a little bit more. And you guys, what else do you see? <laughs> do you see another bee scap? Yes, I am so in love with this one too. I happened to be in TJ Maxx the other day and looked down and lo and behold, there was this bee scap and it was only $16.99 so you know that I was not gonna let it just sit there. And those boards that you see, the top of this wardrobe that it's on, it kind of sinks down in. So for right now, I'm just using these boards going across so I can hold everything into place. But when you are down on the ground, you do not see those boards really. So um, I just wanted to let you know that. But I I've actually wanna have my husband build me like a flat, um, you know, take a piece of wood and cut it to size and actually place down in there so that I can use it because it would actually work a lot better instead of having those boards. But, um, you know, when I'm doing things on my own, you gotta improvise, right? So there's my display, my beignet up here in the office. And I'll be hosting a tour pretty soon of this area. Um, I've got a lot more to do in here. And, um, so make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss anything. Okay, so this is me and my son, Eli. Hey. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> so I said I had a big, huge announcement. Well, I just wanna let you guys know how big this announcement is. We are in our golf cart right now, taking a little trip down here to visit my 30,000 new children. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, I have officially become a beekeeper and I am headed down here right now to show you my two brand new beehives. I just got these little creatures and um, so far so good. It is definitely a huge learning curve. I do not know what I'm doing. You will not see tutorial videos for this, <laughs> but I probably will share vlog style videos of my progress and what's going on. Um, and so let me go ahead and flip the camera around and I'm gonna try and get some close up of the girls at work. They are, it's my two bee skeps. I'm sorry, my two beehives, you guys. And so do you see the girls working away? There they are. This hive on the right hand side is definitely a lot more active than this one. But this one is doing really well as well. This is so exciting you guys. I have been wanting to do this. This has been one of my dreams and I am making my dreams come true. I am, I'm doing it. And so um, technically I was probably a little bit unprepared to do this. I have not taken a class. To those veteran beekeepers out there, I know you're shaking your head at me right now, but my thing is, if I don't just jump in, I may not do it. And so I just jumped in and um, I got my two, I got what's called nukes. And so they were kind of an already established um, couple of colonies. They already have established queens. And I had a couple really nice people um, come over. They are veteran beekeepers. They came over to my house the other day. They came over to my house the other day and we cracked the hives open for the first time. And it was so exciting. We were actually able to see the queen. We were able to see the frames kind of being drawn out and honey and some drone, um, whatever they're called. <laughs> And anyway, and they were, it was just amazing. I was not scared. I had a bee suit on and everything like that. Didn't feel scared. But I will tell you that it is a huge learning curve. And so I will make sure that I document it as much as possible here on my YouTube channel if you have any interest at all. Um, even if you're not interested in keeping bees yourself, I'm sure it'll be kind of just a fun thing to watch. But if I can do it, anyone can do it I promise you so um, my son he kind of wants to get a little involved as well huh yep yeah and so so does Olivia of course and my youngest son is an iffy my oldest daughter probably not so much she probably wants to see him here and there but um, yeah so that's my huge announcement 30,000 new children 30,000 <laughs> and it's amazing because when the night that I picked them up I went really close to the opening of the hives and I heard all of the amazing buzzing 
and then I could actually smell the honey, you guys. And so I am just taking my love affair of bee-related things, and I'm just taking it to the next level, and I am now a beekeeper, and I'm super excited. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I, if you have any questions or anything like that, make sure you leave them in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye! <laughs>